seemed the topic of homosexuals was provoked by the arrogant and careless Western groups that are fond of coming into our schools and recruiting young children into homosexuality and lesb lesbianism. We have always existed in all the society, in all times. So it's not just a Western concept that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm gay. A lot of the countries that now criminalise same-sex relations have a history of celebrating uh, sexual diversity and gender diversity. So rather than homosexuality, I would say that homophobia was actually uh, a Western concept that we have in my country. Perhaps if world history, empire and conquest played out differently, the Caribbean might have been the place that was leading in, in, in LGBTI equality, but you know, sadly our, our history is, is as it is. This young man was seen in a mall in Jamaica putting on lipstick. And then this huge mob gathered and he had to go into a store and they had to lock the door and call the police for his protection. As far as I'm aware to this day, they are, they haven't, there hasn't been any prosecution. The, the perpetrators have not been brought to justice. We don't want no, none of them in this town here. This is our town. What is the thing that LGBT people want that heterosexual people um, don't have? First and foremost, you know, we want to be, we want to be here, and we want to be safe, and we want to be secure. I want to live a better life. I do not want to be criminalized. I do not want to be violated. I do not want to be discriminated against because of who I am, because of my sexual orientation. People are afraid to come out, people are afraid to identify as LGBT and this invisibility as we say is a forced invisibility is a discrimination itself. What we're seeing at the moment is governments imposing certain restrictions that just even prevent the discussion of these issues which means that it, that poses a huge obstacle uh, in moving forward. Why are our governments not allowing us to enjoy the benefits of rights that other human beings enjoy or are we not as, you know, as good enough? Continuous attempts to parachute concepts and notions that lack universal consensus and definition or any basis in international human rights law are not productive to the work of the Council, especially when they carry significant social, cultural, ethical and religious sensitivities. Really, I find it, it quite sad and, and yeah, frustrating when, when concepts like religion and tradition and culture are used to justify human rights violations. You know, it's not that we believe in human rights for one particular set of people alone. And the thing that we're all fighting for is a recognition of the inherent value of all human beings. The Universal Declaration on Human Rights states that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights, and all human beings include human beings who are lesbian or gay or bisexual or trans or intersex. Um, so really it's very, it's very clear for those of us who look at international human rights law and read it that this law applies to all of us regardless. And of course it might take some, some manner of bravery. I'm not saying that 
politicians won't lose a bit of political capital if that happens. Um, but they would have shown immense leadership and they would have garnered the very strong respect of civil society. It's only through engaging with LGBTI people in their country and groups and, and other organisations that governments can really understand uh, what changes need to be made, what policy changes or legal changes need to be made. The Yogyakarta principles are themselves fantastic recommendations and outline very well how states should change laws and policies and develop certain actions to promote human rights relating to sexual orientation and gender identity. The fact that the police, in responding to that, to that issue, the, the issue of the mob surrounding the mall in Jamaica, the fact that the police actually helped him out, they covered his face and they um, secreted him away from the mob is testimony to the fact that there is change happening. We have been able to get the government to engage at least start a discussion on LGBT issues rather than shunning the issue is not important or that we do not exist. Whenever uh, somebody says that there is no LGBT people in Bangladesh, we say we are there. You know, the discrimination that I might have faced or the sexism that I've experienced in my own life has really driven me to try to fight for change. I mean, I don't think that our work is going to be finished until um, until people, until LGBTI people are no longer discriminated against. Um, even on you know a very basic day-to-day -day level like kids being bullied in school or people being denied healthcare or trans people who are being denied ID documents. You're either for humanity or you're not for humanity and I don't think anybody can propose to be for humanity and then be selective in the human beings who they choose to represent, who they choose to defend.